no doubt about it, America is addicted to oil. We've had shortages and price spikes before, but this is definitely not your parents' energy crisis. Today, kicking the habit is an urgent necessity. Urgent because we are funding both sides in the war on terrorism. The U.S. military with our tax dollars and supporters of Islamic militants through our gasoline purchases. Every major national security problem has roots in oil. Terrorists see that oil is our Achilles heel. Getting off oil is also urgent because our consumption of gasoline is warming our planet. We are changing the climate faster than anything we've seen in the last million years. And it is urgent because Asia and Europe, much more than the United States, are heavily investing in green technologies, one of the biggest growth industries for the 21st century. There's a million jobs hanging in the balance. Chinese manufacturers intend to eat Detroit for lunch. While there's no 12-step program for kicking our oil addiction, there's a lot we could do right now, today, to get the oil monkey off our backs. Let's go. Let's rock. All right. New York Times foreign affairs columnist. Fill her up with hydrogen. Author of The World is Flat. Moonshine. <laughs> and three-time winner of the Pulitzer Prize. So I can eat my carpet. Thomas L. Friedman explores what is at stake and what is the cure for America's addiction to oil. I came to the annual auto show in Detroit because at the heart of the energy crisis is our gluttonous consumption of gasoline. 97% of transportation in America is dependent on oil. The 230 million vehicles on U.S. roads today burn more than 55% of the oil we consume. And they emit almost a third of all the greenhouse gases we put in the air every year. And when it comes to power, of course, you got to come to Megacap. Of course, all cars are not created equal. Your favorite car. GM's Hummer gets only about 10 miles per gallon. I asked General Motors CEO Rick Wagoner why they still make Hummers when all they do is drive from gas station to gas station. We build what the market wants. We try to forecast what the market is going to want. But what we have not been successful, and I suspect we never will be, is building a car and telling people, you buy this car. The largest Hummer was recently discontinued because of sagging sales, but the other models are still on the market. Gas prices being what they are, people are buying more hybrids. Sales of hybrids increased more than 141% from 2004 to 2005. A hybrid car has an electric motor that provides additional power to the gasoline engine, greatly reducing the amount of gas burned. The electric motor is connected to a battery which recharges when you slow down or put on the brakes. A car that normally gets 25 miles per gallon of gas could get 40 to 50 with much less pollution. All the American car companies are now jumping on board, like with GM's new Saturn hybrid. It's estimated to get 2732 on the highway, which we are very proud of. But the Japanese are way ahead. This is what we have. Both Ford and GM are closing factories and laying off thousands of workers, while Toyota had its best year ever, in part because of increasing sales of its hybrids. Introducing Ford's Super Cheap, the world's first ever tri-flex fuel-powered vehicle. Across the floor, Ford is unveiling its Super Chief, a supposedly eco-friendly pickup truck. You've got automated ottomans that pop up out of the floorboard. How many miles a gallon does it get? This vehicle, when you're running gas, will get 12 miles to the gallon. Gee, a whopping 12 miles to the gallon. No wonder the Japanese are so far ahead. Thank you. It's terrific. Thank you. Downstairs were the cars of the future most of which seemed pretty far-fetched. I'm not sure you can get a family of four in there, though. I thought, well, at this rate, it might be a while before we get off oil. For those of us who remember the oil crises of the 1970s, there's an unmistakable sense of deja vu. 
Back then, the price of gasoline skyrocketed, and it led to a burst of innovation in alternative energy and fuel efficiency. In fact, from 1977 to 1985, our oil imports from the Persian Gulf fell 87%, and our total consumption dropped 17%. But we did so well, it caused an oil glut, and OPEC oil ministers had a ready response. In the 70s, Sheikh Yamani, speaking for OPEC in London, said, we will drop the price of oil, destroy those investments on Wall Street, and then put the price of oil back, which is exactly what they have done every single decade. So what's different this time? A lot. Islamist terrorism has changed the geopolitical equation, and petrodollars are now funding networks of Islamic militants. People of all political stripes are beginning to recognize just how toxic this dependence on oil is for American foreign policy. And it's spawning new political alliances with some very strange bedfellows. Gal and Annie have a bumper sticker that says, Osama bin Laden hates this car. <laughs> the Set America Free Coalition is dedicated to getting the U.S. off foreign oil. Subscribe to the group the ranges from dyed-in-the-wool environmentalists to a former head of the CIA from Republican and Democratic lawmakers to leaders of the evangelical movement. <laughs> Did you know that evangelical leaders are telling us that global warming must be stopped? It's true. Because Christian evangelicals have joined forces with their traditional nemesis, the liberals and Democrats, on this issue. Is that with God's help, we can stop global warming. How in the world? Did you people find each other? We're all aware that there are evil people feverishly working on ways to, uh, to kill us. We are dependent on our energy resources from people who worship death and have drawn a bullseye on our back. We face immediate threats uh, in terms of security in the environment. We need to do something now. The efficiency and alternatives to oil are no longer a luxury. It's, it's a necessity to make the shift. The coalition has lobbied Congress for a bipartisan bill that will reduce our dependence on oil and encourage super fuel efficient vehicles. The rationale for the legislation is hard to dispute. House will be in order. Where does the money come from for Iran to develop weapons of mass destruction? It's not from adding microchips. Wh where did the Pakistanis get the money to buy nuclear weapon technology from the Chinese? We are at war with an ideology, and that ideology is radical Islam. And we cannot win the war against radical Islam as long as we are funding the other side of the war. In World War II, we bombed the supply chains, and in this war, we're not doing that. We're doing, in fact, just the opposite. Not only we're not cutting off their supply chains, we're sending more money in their direction. We're term. being even stupider than what Lenin described when he said the capitalists will sell us the rope with which we hang them. We're, we're doing much worse than that. We're funding the rope for the hanging of ourselves. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just nuts. The Set America Free Coalition is trying to redefine what a realistic American energy policy should be. The old realism, endlessly repeated by politicians beholden to big oil, was that it's naive to think alternatives to oil could make a difference. For now, we must take the facts as they are. And the reality is that fossil fuels supply virtually 100% of our transportation needs. For years down the road, this will continue to be true. That's but that is so I've wrong. A classic example of pre-9-11 thinking. The new realism is that we can't afford not to think about alternatives to fossil fuels. In the absence of a forward-thinking energy policy, some Americans have taken it upon themselves to help our nation of gasaholics kick the habit.